My name is Laura Rollins and our group did the Cone of Justinian and I had question one which is what can these laws tell us about what the society valued? A couple of things that I thought the society valued was good morals and I pulled a couple of quotes for that which is to live honestly, to hurt no one, to give everyone his due. And another quote that I pulled was the science of the just and the unjust. And there was a lot of talk about family law, fathers being in charge and the children, division, public and private, um, buying and selling, goods taken by force. With the goods taken by force, if you had the wrong intention, then you are viewed as a thief. But if you have the right intention, as in you don't, you felt that it was yours, it was yours to take, then you are not viewed as a thief because you thought that it was yours to take, which goes back to the idea of good morals. And that's it. Hi, my name is Sarah Moore and I will be answering the question about what was life like in the med medieval Byzantium. A day in the life of the Byzantine Empire largely depended on one's birth and the social circumstances of one's parents. There were some opportunities for advancement based on education, wealth, and gaining favor, for, favor from a more powerful sponsor or mentor. There were two broad groups of citizens, the Honestories, the Privileged, and the Humilores, the Humble. Legal punishments were more lenient for the Honestories, in most cases being composed of fines rather than corporal punishment. Lower class children essentially learned the profession of their parents. Aristocratic girls learned how to spin, weave, and to read and write. They also studied the Bible and lives of saints, but they had no formal education as they were expected to marry and then look after children, household property, and manage the slaves. For aristocratic boys, most cities had a school run by lo the local bishops, but there were also private tutors for those who could afford them. Boys were taught first how to read and write in Greek and then schooled in the seven classical arts of antiqu antiquity. At the top of the Byzantine career ladder were the white collar workers who had acquired specific knowledge through the education such as lawyers, accountants, scribes, minor officials, and diplomats, all of whom were essential to the efficient running of the state. There were traders, merchants, and even bankers who might have been extremely rich, but they were held in low esteem by the aristocracy and viewed with some suspicion. The significance of the Justinian Code and how it differs against the other great laws. So the great significance of this code is that this is the first separation between civil law and Roman law. And versus the other laws and codes that the other groups are going over, whereas in the Hammurabi's Code, it is more a more brutal and primitive aspect of law, where the expression where an eye for an eye and a, a tooth for a tooth comes from, which most most crimes are mostly punishable by death or by having some type of the same wrongdoings that were inflicted that you inflicted on someone upon you. The code of nihilism uh, focuses on paying back uh, retribution by the silver uh, shekels. Uh, there are also a few passages about how proper rights are to be given to dead bodies and how that they should be returned to their own home. And then you have the 12th table of the Roman law, uh, which deals with the separating of the classes of Rome, and it also deals with the inheritance of fathers, and uh, was one of the first, and it was one of the first to say that a child born more than 10 months after a father's death does not receive any form of inheritance from that father. And then you have uh, Cicero on the laws, which discusses that all the laws are made and enforced by the gods and they are the supreme lords and governors of all things and that all events are dictated and directed by their influence and wisdom with their divine power. And then you have the laws of the Germanic tribes which are split between the religious uh, ch uh, challenges of law, the, r the rigorous challenges of lawmakers um, that they must uh, submit themselves to just to be able to create law and then the other half is describing the theft of the most important things in their society like cattle pigs and uh, your honor as uh, some of it's coming from uh, insults that would be given or delivered and then uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, which is the summa theologica 
Uh, it assesses the effect of a law as it is to make men good and are the laws um, and are the laws uh, suitably assigned to how that they're used in function.